So here we have the motion of a projectile that actually lands on this tilted ground here. We want to know this total distance up this incline D that we travel. So we're actually going to treat this problem just like any other projectile problem. We're going to find our x-axis here and our y-axis up. And I know a lot of times when you have a tilted problem, you want to tilt your axes, but watch what happens. Remember, here's our object. The acceleration of this object is only that 9.81 going down due to gravity, that 9.81 meters per second squared. Now because we've defined our x to the right and our y to the up, this 9.81 is only going downwards, which means the acceleration in the y will be the negative 9.81 and the acceleration in the x will be zero. And that's simple. That's nice. But if we were to tilt our x and y axes in this case, you can see now that this 9.81 downwards acceleration vector will have a negative y component and a negative x component. So in that case, the acceleration in the x would not be zero. In the next video, I'll do the same problem just with tilting the axes just to show you what you would do to work through that. But for this problem, we'll just keep the standard x to the right, y going up. So I'll use these x and y kinematic equations. At time is equal to zero, our golf ball is at x coordinate of zero. And like we said, the acceleration in the x is zero. In the y, at time is equal to zero, the golf ball starts at y of zero. And the acceleration in the y is that negative 9.81 or rather, since we're in feet per second, it's going to be at negative 32.2. So negative 32.2 feet per second squared. And if I do that times by one half, I'll get negative 16.1. All right, so let's figure out the x and y components of our initial velocity vector. So we need an angle from our initial velocity vector to our x-axis. That's going to be our 45 here plus our 10. So this will be 55. So the x component of our initial velocity vector will be 80 times the cosine of 55. And the initial y component will be 80 sine of 55. That'll get us 45.9 and 65.5. So I'll put this in here and this in here. So we have our x and y motion equations all set up. OK. Now realize that looking at our impact site right here, the x coordinate of that is going to be this length right here. And the y coordinate of it is going to be this length. And they form a right triangle. A right triangle whose hypotenuse is d and whose angle is 10. Which means the x coordinate will be d cosine of 10 and the y coordinate will be d sine of 10. So if I take this and set it for x, this t will be the time at which we impact that incline. And same for the y. If I take that d sine of 10, put it in for y, the t that will come out here will be the time at which we impact. So let's plug these two values in for x and y. So all of these t's here are basically the time of impact. So they're all the, really the same t's. So I'm going to divide my y equation 
by my x equation. And I'm doing y divided by x because this has sine, this is cosine, and sine over cosine is tangent. And I definitely want to deal with, with a tangent rather than a cotangent. So that's why I'm not doing x equation divided by the y equation. Even though, of course, we'd end up with the same answer anyways. So I have a nice cancellation of d here. This turns into tangent of 10. And I'll remember my algebra rules. I'll use 65.5t divided by our 45.9t. And the same thing here. This term divided by that 45.9t. And I'll get a nice cancellation here. I'll end up with t to the 1 on top here. I'll just crunch my math and simplify. I'll get 1.427 here minus 0.351 times by that time of impact. So now we just got to solve for that time. So the time of impact will equal 3.56 seconds. And I'll bring our x equation back where we set x as the x coordinate of our impact. And I'll take that time of impact and I'll plug that in right here so we can solve for that distance d. And I'll get d is equal to 165.9 feet. So these tilted problems are a little bit tricky but not too bad. The way you really navigate through them is that you look at your impact site and just look for that right triangle. And you can find the x coordinate of that impact site and the y coordinate of that impact site. And you can just throw that into your x and y position equations. And then just combine those equations, solve for your time of impact and then put that back into either one of your x or y equations to solve for that distance. All right, hope that made sense. In the next problem I'll actually use the tilted axes just to show you how that would work. But uh, feel free to ask any questions you may have on this on this problem.